This is Staffordshire's new fire truck. It has cost just under half a million pounds, has four pumps and can go anywhere. This is the Unimog. Um, the Unimog is a purpose vehicle that we bought in Staffordshire Fire and Rescue Service. Um, obviously it sits off road capabilities, uh, evident straight away with its uh, high clearance, the tyres it uses and the things that are built into it enables to go down incredibly steep inclines. Uh, especially when this station is based near Canic Chase, and we've got a lot of these areas like that. It enables to go down uh, steep embankments, muddy areas, areas that none of our other vehicles would be able to, to go down and, and get to some of the fires we need to go to. Do you want me to show it you? Yes, please. Okay. What's special about Canuck? Why did, why did Canuck proceed with it? Well, we started animal rescue um, a while ago now, and we became an animal rescue specialist station. So we train to a higher level than some of the other stations. More houses. We can never have too many houses. Um, we also carry these. Most vehicles carry these now. What is it? All front line appliances carry these. They are quick strike backpacks. They're our water backpacks. They carry 20 litres. Um, so if we go to an incident on any vehicle, any of our vehicles, most of them carry these. Um, and the Austin Charge gets to the fire and it's a bonf small bonfire size fire campfire, uh, but it's quite a way off the beaten track. Most of our vehicles won't get to it, and plus it's not worth it if it's a small fire. We'd fill these up, carry these across on our backs. We have a pump that pumps into them. Pumps water at the end. Wow. So, they are quite tiring when you've used them a few times, but it makes a lot more sense than trying to get a vehicle and hose laid out over a long distance for a small fire. Can I put it on? Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> Let me just undo that for you. So this would carry 20 litres 20 litres, which is obviously 20 kilograms. Um, that will be connected into the back, and you would have that. Yeah. And that will be connected into here. It would be a lot heavier with 20 litres of water. You know when you were at that fire, I mean, it was obviously must have been quite a massive fire. Um, the one up Canic Chase? Yes. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel when, I mean, when you go to these fires and are you, have you got lots of adrenaline, how do you feel? Um, you do have a lot of adrenaline but the training t t tends to take over because we train so hard and we do a lot of training for these things like that, training tends to take over so it's not, uh, people say do you get scared and stuff, mm. not really but you don't, because your trains took over you don't really think about it that much. Um, and you must have lots of risk assessments already in your head like is this safe to do that? Yeah everything we do is risk assessed, yeah. um, before we even go for the truck we're risk assessing I and mean, like I said before, we won't put ourselves in danger. Um, if we were tackling that fire at the Canic Chase and it was going to put ourselves in danger, we wouldn't tackle it. We'd find a different way to tackle it or put things in place that reduces that risk. Um, but yeah, we rely a lot on our training, a lot on our standard procedures that we put in place, and we're always risk assessing. It's something we never stop doing ourselves. Uh, on here, we have uh, more animal rescue straps and harnesses and things to lift the cows, lift the animals up. We have um, a big lifting bar here that's, that we can clip. So if you put a harness around an animal and you want to lift them vertically, the issue is once they're lifted out, um, if the animal then becomes more aware of its circumstances and starts, wants to get loose quickly, this is like a quick release bar. So it's called a spreader bar and it gives us the facility to release the animal quickly so it can take itself off before it injures itself or harms itself. Um, we have things like this, rescuing swans, things like that, we've got the dog catcher, um, any, any animal like that that we can't physically reach or if we get within that proximity it startles it and off it goes, this gives us the facility to be able to reach, grab it and it's got a quick release there. And it doesn't hurt them? No, it doesn't hurt them at all. We can, we can drag them to safety. As soon as we think they're in a safe area, we can pull a button and release it instantly, and then they can go off. Um, we have at the back there two ice paths, and they're inflatable paths that go quite a decent distance, and we can put them across water, ice, things like that if we've got a rescue in that situation, and it gives us a firm and stable platform that won't sink. Um, that's what a lot of these devices here are for, to control. Um, what would that be used for, kind of getting Anything, anything that we deem it safe to use for, we can use it for, whether we've come across a vehicle perhaps in a flood or something like that that we need to remove. Um, 
or some, some objects that we need to move or make safe. Perhaps if this vehicle, even though it's a bit more unlikely this vehicle will get stuck because its off-road capability is very impressive. Um, again, this could be used for some sort of self-rescue. Okay. Yeah. Um, the vehicle itself, the gearing system it has built in is very impressive. The inclines it can go up and down and the types of uh, mud and what potentially normal vehicles would sink and get stuck in, what it can go through is really impressive. It can not only got that gearing system involved and the, the, the high amounts of torque it has, it can also deflate its tyres. So it actually spreads the tyres, uh, gives you a bigger surface area. Uh, the manufacturer also told us that it, we can take it down to the optimum pressure for off-roading. So mud, you now if you go through, um, if you drive through mud in your vehicle, your tyre treads will pick up that mud and get the mud stuck in your tyres. When we deflate the tyres on this, that no longer happens. It actually flicks the mud out. So we maintain that high level of traction at all times. So you said earlier that it carries how, how much water? How many 2,000 litres of water. 2,000 litres, so you can go up a very steep slope Yes. 2,000 litres of water. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yes, it is to the point where it can go so steep, it's the seatbelt holding you in the seat. If you weren't wearing a seatbelt, you would be squashed against the window, almost. It's that steep it can go. It's a really impressive with a kit. It's not like a normal, oh, it's a decent hill. It's very steep. Um, I mean, that's useful for kind of trades, which is... It's ideal. That's why, like I said, that's why it's here. Uh, it gives us that immediate turnout. It gives us that, that tool that's really good to use. I was considering a career change, but realised brown and yellow weren't my colours. It takes firefighters 30 seconds to get into this kit. Definitely took me a lot longer. And uh, obviously, we've got <laughs> obviously that does release a bit of water as well if you're not too careful. Okay, so this is even quickly. Very wet in Canuck Fire Station.